So here we have an optimization problem where a Norman window is constructed by adjoining a semicircle to the top of an ordinary rectangular window. Find the dimensions of the window with maximum area if the perimeter is 16 feet. Okay, and so here's our Norman window. And so what we wanna optimize in this scenario for this Norman window is its area, right? We wanna find a maximum area given that the perimeter has to be 16 feet. And so what we wanna to do to solve this optimization problem is set up two equations. We wanna have a primary equation that we're going to take the derivative of, and then we wanna have a secondary equation or a constraint that will allow us to use that primary equation. But before we can write down any of our equations, we need to label our diagram here. And so what I'm going to do is label this bottom edge with X and then label this side edge with Y. And that's really all we need to label in this diagram. And you'll see why in just a little bit. But let's get into writing down the equations that we are going to need to use to solve this problem. And so what kind of equations can we make? Well, we're told what the perimeter is. And so we can assume that we're going to be working with a perimeter equation and we want to maximize the area of the window. And so we know that we're also going to be working with an area equation. And so let's start with the perimeter equation. That is going to be our constraint or secondary equation because that perimeter of 16 feet is a fixed value. It's not going to change, right? And so remember that the perimeter is the measurement around an object. And so in order to represent the perimeter of this Norman window, we will need to know the measurement around the outside of the rectangle, excluding this edge, and then we need to add that to the measurement around this semicircle. All right, so we know that the perimeter is 16, and that will be equal to one length of x plus two lengths of y, so we'll have two y, and then we need to add the measurement around the semicircle. And so how are we going to do that? Well, remember, that for a complete circle, the measurement around the outside of it is known as the circumference. And remember that the circumference of a circle is calculated by multiplying two pi times the radius. Now in this case, we have a semicircle, and so we're only going to need half of that circumference. And so in this case, we would multiply this by one half. And so if we multiply one half by both sides of the equation, we will find that one half of the circumference will be equal to pi times r. All right, so now we just need to figure out what the radius is of this semicircle. And so since this is a semicircle, that means that this edge right here is dividing that circle in half. And so half of this measurement would be the radius, right? This right here is currently the diameter of the circle if it were to be a complete circle. And so half of it would be the radius. And so we know that this edge is equal to this edge, which is equal to x. And so that means that this would be equal to x, which means that half of it would be x divided by two. And so we can say that the radius is a measurement of x divided by two. And so to complete our perimeter equation, we will add half of the circumference of pi times r, which will be pi times the radius of x divided by two. Okay, so that is our perimeter equation. That is going to be our constraint, but now let's work on writing our primary equation, which is going to work with the area. And so in this case, what would the area be equal to? What would be the area of this Norman window? Well, we know that it's at least going to include the area of this rectangle, and the area of the rectangle would be found by multiplying x times y, right, the length times the width, and so we'll have x times y plus the area of this semicircle. And so remember, the area of a full circle is equal to pi r squared. But we're only going to use half of that because this is a semicircle, right? We only need half of the area. And so we will add 1 half times pi r squared, where r is x divided by 2. And so we'll multiply that by x divided by 2 squared. All right, and so that is our area equation or more specifically, our primary equation for this optimization problem. Okay, and so now that we have both of these equations, what we want to do is use our constraint to be able to rewrite our primary equation in terms of one variable so that we can take the derivative of it, right? Currently, this equation is written in two variables. We have x and y, and we would like to only have it written in terms of one of those two variables. And so since I see that we have only one y in this equation, but two x's, I'm going to want to replace y in terms of x because that's going to be easier to work with. 
And so if we go to our constraint here, we are going to solve for y and whatever that is equal to, we will plug in for that y in our area equation. And so let's solve for y in our constraint here. I'll start by subtracting these other two terms to the other side of the equation. And so we'll have 16 minus x minus pi times x divided by two is equal to two y. And then what we can do is divide both sides of the equation by two, and that will isolate y and tell us what y is equal to. And so I'm going to swap sides of the equation here. I'm just gonna say that y is equal to this side of the equation divided by two. And so 16 divided by two is eight. Negative x divided by two will be negative x divided by two. And then negative pi times x divided by two divided by two will be equal to negative pi times x divided by four. Okay, and so now that we know what y is equal to, we can plug this in for y in our area equation, and then it will be expressed entirely in terms of one variable, and so then we will be able to take the derivative of that equation. And so if we replace y with what it is equal to, and I'll write that down here, we will have that the area is equal to x times eight minus x divided by two minus pi times x divided by four, and then we'll add the rest of the area equation, which is plus one divided by two times pi times x divided by two squared. I'm actually going to square that right now, and we will have x squared divided by four. Okay, and so now we have our area equation entirely in terms of x, but before we take the derivative of it, let's simplify it just a little bit to make the derivative process a little bit easier. And so what I'm going to do is distribute this x through this quantity, right? We're just gonna multiply each term by x. And so we'll have that the area is equal to eight times x minus x squared divided by two minus pi times x squared divided by four. And then we will add our last term, which if we pull this one fourth out to the front and multiply it by the one half, we will have one eighth times pi times x squared. Okay, and so now we have a more simplified version of our area equation. And so now if we clean up our work here, we are now ready to take the derivative of this area equation, and then we can set it equal to zero and solve for our value of x. That will give us the first dimension of that Norman window that we are trying to maximize the area of. But there's one more thing that we need to do before we take the derivative, and that is to determine what values of x make sense for this scenario right, what is the domain of x? And what I mean by that is what is the smallest possible value of x that makes sense for this window, and what is the largest value of x that makes sense for this window? Keeping in mind that we're looking for a maximum area and the perimeter needs to be 16 feet. Okay, and so first we're going to look at the smallest value of x. And so what would the smallest value of x be that would make sense? Well, it's not going to be a negative value, right? We're not gonna have negative dimensions for a window. And so we know that X is at least going to be positive. And so the lowest possible value that it could be would be zero. Now it couldn't actually be zero because if it was zero, then we wouldn't have a window, right? X needs to at least be a little bit larger than zero. And so we would say that our lower bound is zero, but it would not include zero. And so we have a parenthesis and not a bracket. Okay, and so that's going to be the lower bound of our domain. But what would be the upper bound? What is the largest possible value that x could be? Well, in order to figure that out, let's just imagine that y was the smallest that it could be, which like x would also be zero. Zero would be the theoretical lowest value that y could be for this window. And so if y was zero, that would tell us the largest value that x could be. And so if we go to our perimeter equation, and we set y equal to zero and solve for x, that will tell us what the largest value of x would be. And so let's do that. We would have that 16 is equal to x plus two times zero plus pi times x divided by two. And so then we would have that 16 is equal to x plus zero, right? Two times zero is zero. And so then we'll just have plus pi times x divided by two, which if we move that two to be beneath the pi, we will have pi divided by two times x. And so then what we could do is pull x out of each of these terms, and then we'll have that 16 is equal to x times one plus pi divided by two. And then all we have to do to solve for x is divide both sides by one plus pi divided by two. 
And so if we do that, we will find that x is equal to 16 divided by 1 plus pi divided by 2. And so this right here, 16 divided by 1 plus pi divided by 2, that would be the largest possible value that x could be for this Norman window. Now we can express this in a little bit of a nicer way if we multiply by a form of one of two divided by two, that will get rid of this fraction in the denominator of our expression. And so if you multiply the numerator by two and the denominator by two, we'll have 32 up top and then we'll have two plus pi, right? That two times one will be two and then two times pi divided by two will just be pi. And so what we'll have is that x is equal to 32 divided by two plus pi. That is going to be the upper bound for the domain of x in this scenario. And so I'll write that down, we'll have 32 divided by two plus pi, and that is the upper bound. It can't be that value, but anything less than that value is totally fine. The reason it can't be that upper bound is because that value is when y is equal to zero, and you don't have a window when y is equal to zero. So any value smaller than that is going to be just fine because then y wouldn't be zero. All right, and so let's clean up our work again. Now that we have the domain of x, we now know what values of x make sense for this scenario. And so now we are ready to take the derivative of our area equation. And so if we do that, we'll have that a prime, the derivative of a is equal to eight, right? The derivative of eight x will just be eight. When you take the derivative of x to the power of one, it's just equal to its coefficient, which is eight. And then we will subtract the derivative of x squared divided by two, which if we use the power rule, we'll multiply the exponent down and subtract one from the exponent. And so we'll have two times x divided by two. And then we will subtract the derivative of pi times x squared divided by four, which once again, if we use the power rule, we'll have pi times two times x divided by four plus the derivative of one eighth times pi times x squared, which once again, if we use the power rule, we will have one eighth times pi times two x. Okay, and so if we simplify this, we will have that a prime is equal to eight minus two divided by two is just one. So we'll have x minus pi times two divided by four times x and two fourths would just be one half. And so I'll pull that one half outside of the x. So we'll have pi divided by two times x. And then we'll add that to one eighth times pi times two x. Two times one eighth would be one fourth. And so we will have pi divided by four times x. Okay, and so now if we clean up our work here, we can now set our derivative equal to zero and solve for x. And so we'll have that zero is equal to eight and then let's pull x out of each of these terms, right? These three terms have a common factor of x. And so if we pull that out, specifically if we pull out a negative x, we will have negative x times one, right? If we pull negative x out of this term, we're just left with one. And then if we pull negative x out of this next term, we'll be left with plus pi divided by two. And then if we pull negative x out of our last term, we will have negative pi divided by four. Okay, and so then if we add this expression to both sides of the equation, we will have x times one plus pi divided by two minus pi divided by four is equal to eight. And then if we divide both sides by this quantity, we will have isolated x and we'll know what our value of x would be for the dimensions of our Norman window to maximize the area. And so we will have that x is equal to eight divided by one plus pi divided by two minus pi divided by four. And note that pi divided by two minus pi divided by four is just pi divided by four. And so we will just have one plus pi divided by four. Okay, and so then just like we did for our upper bound of the domain, we can multiply this by a form of one of four divided by four, and that will help get rid of this fraction in the denominator of our expression, right? This four will cancel out with this four, and so then we'll have a nicer expression. And so eight times four is 32, four times one is four, and four times pi over four is just pi. And so then we'll have that our final value for x will be 32 divided by four plus pi. That is going to be the value of x, which is one of the dimensions we need for our window. Okay, but just to be sure, we wanna make sure that this value of x is within our domain and so 32 divided by two plus pi is approximately 6.22.
And so if we plug this value into your calculator and get a decimal value, you will find that that is approximately equal to 4.48. And that is less than that upper bound. And so we know that X is within a domain. And so we're good. This value of X makes sense for this scenario. Okay, and so if we clean up our work here, now that we have our value of X, we can find our value of Y, which is the other dimension that we need. And so what we will do is plug X into our constraint and solve for Y. Okay, but before we do that, I'm going to rewrite this equation so that it's a little bit easier to see how we're going to plug in X. And so what I'm going to do is have that Y is equal to eight minus one half times X, right? That is the same as X divided by two. And then we'll have minus pi divided by four times X, which is the same as pi times X divided by four, right? These equations are equivalent. And so now what we can do is plug this value of X into each of these X's. And so if we do that, we'll have that Y is equal to eight minus one half times 32 divided by four plus pi minus pi divided by four times 32 divided by four plus pi. And so now all we have to do is simplify this expression and we will have our value of Y, which is the other dimension we need to solve this problem. And so if we simplify, we'll have that Y is equal to eight and then one half times 32 is 16. And so we'll have minus 16 divided by four plus pi. And then we will subtract pi divided by four times 32. And so in the numerator, we'll have 32 times pi divided by four divided by four plus pi. All right, and so then if we clean up our work, we can simplify this even further by noting that 32 divided by four is equal to eight. And so what we have here in the numerator is eight times pi. And so I'll rewrite that to just be eight times pi. And so we'll have eight pi. And now what we want to do is combine these terms by getting a common denominator. We already have four plus pi in the denominator of these two terms. We just need it in this term for eight. And so what we'll do is multiply eight by a form of one of four plus pi divided by itself. And so what we'll have is that y is equal to eight times four plus pi divided by four plus pi. And then we will subtract our other two terms of 16 divided by four plus pi, and then minus eight pi divided by four plus pi. All right, and so then what we can do, since each of these terms have the same denominator, is combine their numerators into one numerator. And so we'll have that y is equal to eight times four plus pi, minus 16 minus eight pi divided by four plus pi. And so now if we clean up our work again, we can simplify this even further by multiplying eight through this quantity. And so we'll have that y is equal to 32 plus eight pi. And then we'll still have minus 16 minus eight pi divided by four plus pi. And so now we'll have some nice cancellation that occurs. Right, notice that we have a positive eight pi and a negative eight pi, and so those will cancel out. And then we have 32 and negative 16 that will combine to just be positive 16. And so we will have that y is equal to 16 divided by four plus pi. And now we have both dimensions that we needed to know for our Norman window, right? We have our value of x and we have our value of y. Just note that each of these are values of feet since our perimeter was 16 feet. And so remember to label those accordingly when you write out your dimensions, right? So the final dimensions is that the window would be 32 divided by four plus pi times 16 divided by four plus pi feet. Those are the dimensions of the Norman window to maximize its area given that the perimeter is 16 feet. All right, and so with that, that is the end of this optimization problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions and you found this video to be helpful or you enjoyed it, feel free to check out my channel where I have various other videos on calculus, including more optimization problems that you might find helpful. All right, and so with that, that is all I had for this video. And so I will see you next time.